Welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about e-commerce for artists selling your art crafts and art prints online. And before going through this video, I have a question for you. Why I said e-commerce for artists, what did you think of? Did you think of Etsy or Shopify or Saatchi Art or Art Finder? Leave me a comment below in the comment box because I want to know where you are in this journey of converting your art business into an online business. I want to better help you and create the next series of content. So I really need to know the answer. So let me know. Thank you very much. Today, I want to talk about different features because when I was doing research on different e-commerce solutions, for artists. I found maybe 30, 40 different platform softwares, marketplaces, and they say they will help you sell your art. But in reality, uh, most of them lack some features here, some features there. And the most popular solutions that we all talk about, but maybe they're not really the best solutions. And that's why I want to help you by going over a list of key features that you might need as an artist so you know exactly what you're looking for. I know that it's very hard to put it into words. You need a lot of uh, technical vocabulary and experience in order to describe exactly what you want and need to a professional or to your software supplier. That's why you need to know exactly those terms. Grab a drink if uh, this is what you need and let's go on to this list. First thing you need to think about is hosted. Where is it hosted? What does it really mean hosted? For example, we're going to have a party tonight. Do we have it in your house or do we have it in my house? You see, where is it hosted? For example, you don't have a website. You need this big cartel Gumroad to host your web store. So it's hosted by them. Or you want more customization, more control over your business. You need to host your own by using maybe Shopify, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, there are a lot of softwares out there, but it divides by two different, let's say, leagues. The self-hosted league that you host yourself or their hosted league that they help you sort out, but it's on their URL and their server. And you really need to make this choice before. And maybe I will make another video, uh, self-hosted versus hosted, but it's a topic of uh, entire uh, different video. So let's move on to the next is free plan right for you, right? So free plan is a desired choice for many struggling artists uh, who do not have the financial resources to pay for a very expensive Shopify plan or Squarespace or Wix commerce plan. But is free plan really what you need? Because free plans usually with hidden terms and conditions. Okay, not that hidden, but as you can see, there are a lot of transaction fees, listing fees or handling fees or whatever you call it, commissions. Basically, you don't get paid 100% of the customer's payment. You get maybe 90%. For example, with Gumroad, you need to pay around 10% in total. It's for free and they have to make money. They did the work, right? So you need to pay something. What if you sell original works of art um, priced at $1,000? $1,000, well, you know, you can just pay a very good plan with another platform, with another service provider. You don't don't necessarily need to use the free plan in the long run is not really sustainable because in the end you are <laughs> paying a lot more than what you wish for. Number three, staff account. Artists are presumably solopreneurs. And when I heard the word solopreneur, I laughed and I thought it's exactly the word to describe a lot of artists. But look at the most successful artists in the world. They are not solopreneurs. They have a team of professionals or a team of family and friends helping them run their business. If you need uh, to have someone over to help you, you need a staff account because you don't want to give away all of your credentials to another person unless this person is directly related to you. If it's an employee or intern, you really don't want to give them so much liability. It's not just the risks for you, but it's also risks for them. What if they mistakenly leaked this information? It's not even their fault. You don't want to do that. So having staff account is a really good feature for growing artists who are growing to a team of artists. 
Number four, payment gateways. Different payment gateways have different terms and conditions. And wait a second, what is a payment gateway? Is basically how the customers paying you through PayPal, through Stripe. You need to get paid, right? This is the whole point of selling art online. There's usually a list of payment gateways that a specific platform is working with. For example, sales is working with sales pay, their own payment gateway, and PayPal. It doesn't work with other payment gateways. I know it can be very limited. That's why you need to work backward. Look at in your country, what kind of payment gateways are popular, have good conditions, have good credit card rates. And then you just work it backward to choose the right e-commerce solution that works with this specific payment gateway. Number five, instant payout. Instant payout is very important for smaller entrepreneurs, artists that who are running short on money. You need every penny as fast as you can so that you can pay for the bills. For example, you need to pay for the rent, the staff, the whatnot, material costs and advertisement to promote your art and your website and your brand. And you need to pay a lot of things. And usually you can only have the thing that you need until you pay. If you don't pay, you don't get the thing. So you need the money as soon as possible to your account, but not everybody uh, pays you uh, right away. And I know this sounds very crazy or strange for some people, but it's the case. Uh, for example, Art of Wear is a POD service provider. They pay you every Friday. Gumroad pays you every Friday. And it's like, if you need the money on Wednesday, you don't get the money. You need to wait until they pay you. And that can be a huge inconvenience for some artists. Number six, number of products. Many e-commerce platforms have unlimited products, so you can have as many as you wish, but a lot of these made by artists, for artists kind of e-commerce platforms, they have a very strict limitation and it's really bothering me. For example, Indie Made, even if you pay, even if you pay their highest fee plus, you still have a limitation. And I think this is not really right or this is not right for everybody. For example, if you are a street artist and you did a series of art prints and you want to do hand embellished prints, embellished prints means that each art is unique, handmade, and it has a different tonality, different kind of strokes, and you need to take a picture and you want to sell it separately. You don't want to sell it as a generic print. Thus, every hand embellished print is a separate product. And you might have 20 in one go, and that could be a problem if you have a limit of five, for example, on Big Cartel. And if you want more, you have to pay. So the limitation is real, right? It exists and it might be a problem, although that right now you're not painting that much. It will be a problem eventually when you become more and more productive. Number seven, images per product. Some platforms like IndieMade, Big Cartel, those two, again, like the point number six we talked about, they have a number of images per product limit. And if you want to show your product in a variety of different uh, ways, like details, positions, you hold it, a work in process, you cannot show so many pictures per product. And this bothers me a lot because I think you need to showcase your art, your creative process, and you want to put as many pictures as you can put. And they shouldn't be um, constraining you. They should be helping you to sell the art so they can make money and you can make money, right? So this is really silly. And today you can have really good compression to compress the images to load really fast and I really think they shouldn't have any limitation at all. And apart from that, you need to check out if they have HD videos to show your product so you can record a little video, especially if you sell sculptures, you need to spin it so you can see 360 degree of this sculpture that is luring your customers into purchasing this piece of art. Now, number eight, print on demand automation. Most of the e-commerce platforms today can allow you to have this automation. That means the customers would place an order and immediately this is put to production without you having to do anything at 
all. This is the beauty of print on demand. That is the difference from uh, works of art. You have to make a manually package and ship and process everything. It's automatic, so it's passive income, and you have a lot of more time to work on your art and marketing. And that's why you need to look at the print on demand service provider that you want to work with. Maybe it is not a common one. Maybe it's a special one in your region, and you work it backwards to see what kind of e-commerce platforms that work with automatically those kind of POD service providers. Number nine, pay what you want. Pay what you want is a great way to market your art without hurting your brand. If you sell your art very cheap, and your customers might think, "Oh my God, it's it's a sellout." If you sell it too expensively, a lot of people who love your art, who adore your art, will not be able to purchase. Pay what you want is a nice, generous gesture to tell your fans, "Hey, you don't have a lot of money. It's all right. Come and pay what you want, and you can have this piece of." Digital downloads, brushes, eBooks, or whatnot. Normally, I would recommend you sell, pay what you want with digital products, not with physical ones, because it's taking a lot of time from you to actually have to fulfill those orders. And if they pay a few dollars, it's not really worth your time. If you like to give away regularly freebies or pay what you want, you need to make sure this e-commerce platform will not charge you for being generous. A lot of payment processors would still charge. Order there is a fee, so you need to choose wisely if you want to do this pay what you want kind of giveaways. Number ten, sell memberships and courses. I have made another video on how to sell memberships, and I made a separate video on how to sell art courses. I think by now I made a video on every single topic. A lot of those e-commerce platforms they do not really have in mind that you could sell art courses online, and normally they would really sell it as a generic product. But you might want to have. Extra marketing tools, follow-ups, dripping content, drip, drip, drip. So a lot of them don't have this support. You need to double check if you can do that. And there are some solutions like add-ons on WooCommerce. You can just add, add, add. Shopify as well. And there are some out-of-the-box solutions for you to have an integral package to to do everything: digital downloads, subscription, and courses on Podia, for example. Number eleven, sell offline. And you may say, wait a second. Now is the lockdown. Everybody's selling online. You're talking about how to sell online, and now suddenly you say sell offline. Like, what are you talking about? Blended option is really common. Like, an artist could have an online store, but would also go to art fairs and conventions and craft fairs to sell those arts. And you want to sync your inventory. You want to make sure that simultaneously, when someone purchases an art face to face, you want to have the option to remove this from your online store. So quickly, you don't double sell, you don't oversell. That's why you need this e-commerce software to offer both management tools to be able to sell also、uh, offline as well. Number twelve, sell multi-channel. Imagine if you sell on Etsy, you sell on eBay, you sell on Amazon, you sell on different platforms, and at the same time on your website and offline, you want to have a way to have one listing, and you just push it like. Push it right through to Etsy. You can do that with some e-commerce platforms that manages those kind of multi-channel sales, and also you can have、uh, marketing tools to、uh, market multi-channelly. I don't know if there is a word called multi-channelly. So you need something like that if you are growing very fast on different platforms. You want to have this easy way to manage everything within a click. Number thirteen, sell services, and you may say. Why would I want to sell services? I'm selling my art. I'm not selling a service. But think about it. If you sell bespoke pieces, commissioned pieces, you're actually selling services. And most of platform marketplaces do not allow you sell bespoke pieces because、uh, you can have a lot of disputes. And delivery、uh, delay, or also some things like return policy, and it's very complicated to handle bespoke pieces, and that's why you need to have your own e-commerce feature to handle this yourself. So you can have a very sophisticated way to、uh, send a payment、uh, order to your customers, and they will just pay it directly.、Um, yeah. So now you have heard all of those. Thirteen points above. Ask yourself those questions. Do I need those features? Is this something I definitely need? If this is the case, don't be persuaded by other people. Oh, maybe they love Shopify. 
But maybe you cannot afford Shopify. Maybe they love Gumroad, but maybe Gumroad is too low end for you. You really need to find out what exactly features you need so that you make the best choice from the first time and you save a lot of time to switch between different platforms as you grow. All right, that's all for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If this is the case, make sure you click like and subscribe. See you in the next video.